Hi there, this is Anna and this is episode 3. And in this episode we're going to look at the division of free morphemes into lexical morphemes and functional morphemes. So, in the last video we created a table for our morphemes and it looked like this. Morphemes can be divided into free morphemes and bound morphemes. And bound morphemes can be further divided into inflectional morphemes and derivational morphemes. But now we're going to be working in this section up here. And so we're going to add that free morphemes can be further divided into lexical morphemes and functional morphemes. And this is the area that we're going to be working in today. Now, when we were looking at grammar oh so long ago uh, and word classes, I showed you this diagram here. Do you remember this? Word classes, the parts of speech. Uh, and these are the, I divided them into nine different word classes. And then, importantly, I then divided those classes into an open class word and a closed class word. Okay? And what we decided were that interjections, nouns, lexical verbs, not auxiliary verbs, but lexical verbs, adjectives and adverbs, were all an example of open class because you can easily add new words into these classes and conjunctions, prepositions, auxiliary verbs, pronouns and determiners were closed class words uh, because it's very very hard to add new words into these sections. I mean this is very evident uh, in current societies push towards an alternative gender pronoun that is encompassing of non-binary gender and we've tried lots of different kinds of gender genders, uh, gender titles such as Z, Z-H-E, um, and other gender pronouns, and they're all being suggested. Uh, but it's the singular they that seems to be gaining ground uh, in our language as we search for this, cha uh, this way to express these changing society attitudes. Um, it seems easier to change the meaning of a word that already exists in the closed class uh, word than it is to introduce a brand new word into this category. And this is an example of how the closed class category really does fight the idea of bringing a new word inside it. Of course it does happen as words shift from one category to another, but on the whole uh, it's very hard to bring in a new word. But anyway, I digress. The reason why I'm talking about closed class and open class categories is because except for one exception, which is the interjection up here, which has a purely functional purpose, all of these open class words not the auxiliary verb, all of those are in fact free lexical morphemes. And all of the ones on this side, which are closed class words plus the interjection as our exception, are in fact free functional morphemes. So these interjections, fantastic, you beauty, how's that? They're also examples of functional morphemes, although people experiment with them all the time. I mean, Roald Dahl is one of the best experimenters of them all. So look, let's have a try together now to try to delineate which is which when it comes to free lexical and free functional morphemes. We'll have a look at the following sentence. Oh no, well first of all, before we do that, uh, let's have a look at these words here. We've got examples of lexical morphemes, which are nouns, verbs, adjectives and adverbs, such as dog, walk, craze, big, happy, and so on. And examples here of functional morphemes, which are determiners, uh, pronouns, prepositions, auxiliary verbs, conjunctions, and interjections, things like and, it, am, the, but, have, and how's that. All right, so now we can have a try. You've seen some examples. So the first thing we need to do when we've got this sentence, a young child played happily in the backyard, the first thing we want to do is to try to identify well which are the free morphemes and which are the bound morphemes. And once we've identified which or which of these are free morphemes, we can then try to identify well which are the lexical words and which are the functional words. And then if we really want to extend ourselves, we can also revisit our knowledge of bound morphemes and identify the inflectional and derivational options too. So if you want to try and have a go at that by yourself, then I suggest you pause the video now. And I'm going to get straight on with it. Okay? So I might get a green pen to represent my um, 
free morphemes. So we'll have our first F, which is free morpheme. And then I might make blue my bound morpheme. So B is our bound morpheme. Okay, and then after I've divided into free and bound, I'm then going to further divide it into functional, which will be F as well. And I'll also, of course, use L, which will be lexical. Okay, and so that's what I'm going to use. So that means FF will be functional and FL will be free lexical and so on. With the bound, I'm going to divide I for inflectional and D for derivational. So let's see if we can have a go at breaking those up now. All right, so A is freestanding. So we'll put F here. Young is freestanding. Child, freestanding. Played, well this is divided into a freestanding and a bound. Okay. Happily, again, I think I've got a free here and a bound here. Keep going. We have in is free, the is free, and backyard. That can be divided into two, but they're both free morphemes. And the term for that, when you're putting two free morphemes together, is actually called, it's that it's a compound or compounding the words. Where X actually our next video. Okay, so here's an example of a compound that we'll be looking at in the next video. All right, so we've divided them up into free and bound morphemes. And now what we need to do is, first of all, we'll look at the free morphemes and decide whether they're functional or lexical. So A is definitely functional. It's giving us information about the young child. Young, however, is lexical because it can be changed. An old child, a happy child, and of course, a child itself is lexical as well. We could be talking about anything, a man, a woman, dog. Okay, then we have played is also lexical because they could be doing anything at all. Uh, they could be throwing, uh, uh, catching, uh, running, and so on. Happily, another lexical verb, another lexical morpheme here. Happy, because of course they could be sad, they could be all kinds of things. In is functional. That is functional. And back and yard are both lexical. Okay, so that's how they can be broken up. And if I go back to these bound morphemes here, this one here is an inflectional morpheme because it's telling us that it happened in the past tense. So it's giving us grammatical information. And this one down here is derivational because it's changing happy, which is an adjective, into happily, which is an adverb. So it's changing the um, class, the word class. It's converting the word. Okay, so this is how we can identify free and bound morphemes. And of those free and bound morphemes, whether they're functional, lexical, or inflectional and derivational. I hope that's helped. Well done to you. Okay, so we've been introduced to the different kinds of lexical morphemes and the next, or the free morphemes, and the next video will explore compounding, okay, or the compounds, uh, which is the joining of two free morphemes to make a word. So until then, thanks for watching. The Language Code.